Welcome to a basic Bash Shell scripting tutorial. Today we'll be doing some basic Bash Shell scripting and learning what Bash is, including learning how to script some basic commands to help automate some system processes. Mainly today, we'll focus on writing our very first Bash script. I'm gonna launch a terminal here because we'll need it to create our first script. The thing that makes Bash Shell scripting so great is if you have a Unix or Linux based system, you can pretty much begin scripting using the terminal right away without much setup at all. And yes, for those of you who use Mac OS, it does work as well. And now let's start by talking about what is Bash. Bash is a command processor created for Unix based systems. Mainly it allows you to give specific commands through a terminal and it processes those commands in order to tell the system what to do. Some basic Bash commands include ls, which can list all the contents of a directory echo, which allows you to print out a variable or string touch, which can help you create a new file, mmkdir, short for make directory. And there's a ton more examples, but these are some of the basics that we'll be talking about. All right, and to get us started, we wanna figure out where our bash program is located. So we can do that by simply typing in which bash into the terminal. You can see here on my Ubuntu Linux setup, it's currently located in the user bin directory. So this is where the system uses bash from. So it executes out of this directory. And with that being said, you can use this bash scripting tutorial on almost any Linux or Unix based platform, as long as you have bash installed. And this is one way to check that. So if you're using Ubuntu, Kali, Manjaro, Linux Mint, MX Linux, what have you, you can follow along. Something important to note is that many systems already include bash in the environmental path directory. Meaning if we typed in echo and then typed in dollar sign path to spit out the contents of our environmental path directories, we can see that there are already many paths included and we can tell where the system looks through first in order to use specific commands that you might type into a terminal and as you can see here we do have user bin as one of the options we said bash was located in there with the which command so when we type in bash the system knows to go to search through these various different directories until it finds a match for the command you're trying to issue, in our case, bash. So to execute something, I'm going to do bash space dash dash version and press enter. So this here will give us the version of bash that I'm currently using. It's a new base tool. And as we can see here, I'm using 5.1.16. And it's for a 64-bit Linux architecture. This is good to know in case you need to know what version of bash you're running in case there's a newer version and something has been fixed or updated or a command has been added but those days are pretty much long gone since bash has been stable and running and not many new additions have been added for a quite a long time now if anything it's going to be adding new functionality so let's first start out by clearing the screen and creating a new file i'm going to change over to the documents directory so i'm going to do cd space documents that way i have a clean spot to make this new script. You can create this script anywhere you want on the system. I'm just going into documents myself. It doesn't really matter. Next, I'm gonna type in ls, and that's going to show me what's in the directory. Nothing, no files, no other directories. And to do this, I'm going to use nano. If you type in nano and put a space, and then you're gonna put a name for your script. I'm just gonna be creative here and just do script.sh. And I'm gonna press enter. After that, we're going to be in the nano text editor, and this is where we can begin writing our program. Let's make something really simple. We'll spit out a string to our console or terminal, and to do so, we're going to have to put in a few special characters first. So we can tell the system what bash program we want to use. And because we used which earlier, figure out where bash is located. Mine was located in user bin slash bash. So all this says here is with this hashtag exclamation point, this is the absolute path to the bash program that I want to use. You can also put relative paths. If I just put in bash, instead of actually specifying where it was located, this would work as well. That's because it would try using the environmental variable to find out where bash is, as I showed you before. Of course, that's only going to use the first instance that it finds. It might not be the correct instance if you have multiple bashes installed. After we have that line in, we'll enter a couple times and we'll type in echo, which we've already used and you've seen. But this time we're going to tell it to echo something very specific. So I'm going to do a space and a quote and type in something. I'm just going to type in hello, I'm Savvy Nick, end quote. And to save this, I'm going to do control X 
to exit. It's gonna ask you to save the modified buffer. I'm gonna press Y and then press enter to override the script name and actually write out this file. And now if I do ls space dash al, that will help me list all the files in the current directory and get some more information about those files. And look at that, now I have a script.sh file. And now we're missing one extra thing to be able to run our script file, and that's executable permissions. So in order to make this script executable, we're gonna have to run a command. And if we did it correctly, we'll see this name turn green. And then you'll notice some of the permission flags over here will change as well. There's really two ways of doing this. First method I'm gonna do is chmod space, and I'm gonna do plus x, which will make the file executable. After that, I'm gonna just type in the file I wanna make executable, so script.sh. If you hit tab twice while you're writing in script sh, it will automatically fill it in for you, as that's how the autofill option works in the terminal. Of course, if it can only find something with the key sequence that you've been putting in. It's just a shortcut for you. And then we press enter. Let's do ls-al again. And notice that script sh has turned green. And also that the flags have changed from before. A different way of doing this, but is equivalent, we could have done chmod and then put in 755 and then script.sh. And that's just another way of giving yourself executable permissions. I personally like doing the plus x route, but that's up to you. And if you made it this far, please smash that like button for me so other people can learn about Bash Shell scripting and enjoy this video as well. And finally, what we need to do is run the script. We're gonna type in dot slash, and then we're gonna do script.sh. And when we press enter, it will be executed. And look at this. Hello, I'm Savvy Nick, spit out to the console. Congratulations, you've successfully made your first Bash Shell script, and now you can make as many as you want. You don't have to call it script.sh. You don't even necessarily have to put the .sh at the end. You can still create and run a script with all sorts of naming convention. It really doesn't care as long as you have that hashtag exclamation point at the beginning, it will resolve your file as a Bash Shell script. So let's go and make some changes, be a little quicker, and make another program or script. So this time I'm going to do nano, again, space. I'm gonna call this one var script after that. This time I'm not gonna do the sh, I'm gonna press enter. And first I'm going to include like we did before. So user bin bash, press enter and start writing my program again. So I'm gonna do echo, hey, it's savvy Nick again. Press enter and do a new line. Then I'm gonna create a new variable. I'm gonna do var followed by an equal sign. So that means var is going to be equal to whatever you put after this. I'm gonna create another string by creating a beginning and end quote. And what I'll actually do is put again in here and erase it from the echo up top. That way I spit out again right after writing, hey, it's Savvy Nick. So we'll use our favorite command here, echo again. And in order to access var and spit it out with echo, we need to do a dollar sign and then type in var. So all this is saying over here is print out a variable. It's gonna be called var. And to access var, we need the dollar sign. So what is var? Well, var currently stores the word again. That should be it. We can do control X and it says to save the modified buffer. I'm gonna put Y. I'm gonna press enter to write the name. Now, if we do LSAL again, notice we have our script. It's not in green, so we must change in permissions again with chmod. I'm gonna do plus X and then do var script. Press enter, list it out one more time. Notice it's green, we can run it. So I'm gonna do dot slash var script. And once we run it, notice it says, hey, it's Savvy Nick. And then again, fantastic work. And real quick, I'll show you that you can also run a command like ls, and that's pretty simple too. I'm just gonna do ls dash al over here, save and exit, and then rerun the var script. And notice what it does this time. Hey, it's Savvy Nick, again. And then it spits out what's in this current directory because that's where I ran the script. How powerful is that? You can issue normal commands directly through your bash script that you would typically do through the terminal and you begin to see how powerful bash scripting can be because you can automate what's done on your system all through a executable script. And what we've done today is created our first bash script, defined a variable and even echoed out that variable. I hope you enjoyed this and remember to subscribe below, hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video.